Hello everybody and welcome back to Bad Luck Garage. I'm Robert and I'll be your host this evening. So as you saw during the intro there, Ray did come over and we pressure washed and cleaned out the engine bay on the uh, DR Nova. So what I'm doing today is I'm finally going to finish buttoning up our engine over here and uh, we're going to use this Holly oil pan. So I kind of wanted to just give you guys a look at it, talk about a couple of the features it has and maybe compare it to the truck oil pan that we have sitting over here and uh, yeah, get the sucker bolted on. To start off with in the box, we've got our uh, lower oil pan baffle here. We have a new pickup tube obviously designed to fit this pan directions and uh we got all of our plugs we got our o-ring for our uh pickup tube that hopefully will fit <laughs> uh we've got a block off oil block off or oil cooler line block off plate uh, a lot of these are gm parts too guys we've got See, there's the block off plate and it is a you know genuine gm unit they give you here's our adapter that screws into it for our oil filter also genuine gm got a new oil plug a warranty card uh that's a gasket for the uh block off plate i just showed you gasket or the o-ring for the oil pump pickup tube looks like huh i'm guessing these are new oil pump pickup tube bolts and uh other miscellaneous hardware that i'm not sure what it's for i know what these are for i'm actually going to go over that in just a second and here in the bottom of the box is our new holly oil pan now this does not come with an oil pan gasket, guys. You'll have to, uh, you know, if your old gasket's in good shape, you can reuse that or get you a new gasket. So this is part number 302-3. And uh, to be honest, it, it kind of reminds me of like a F-body oil pan, except maybe the sump isn't quite as far forward, not quite as long. But other than that, that's, that's kind of what it reminds me of. One really cool feature of this pan is it actually has uh, pre-threaded holes on either side for a turbo drain line, if you can see that. So uh, whether you're running a single turbo or twin turbos, you know, you've, you're, already, uh, you're already drilled here. You know, your, your turbo, turbo line should just screw right in. Uh, obviously on the DR Nova, we are not running turbos. So it comes with these screw-in plugs here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just showing you this for demonstrative purposes, but I'm gonna screw those in right here. Uh, I will put some uh, Teflon tape on them before I put them in permanently. You can also see on our old pan, the drain plug was actually on the very back of the uh, sump here. On this pan, it's on the side. And I do want to make a note about these oil drains. Uh, I was actually on a Nova Facebook page the other day and people were complaining about where Holly located these. Apparently in some applications, this will hit like right around the engine mount, something or another, and uh, kind of makes it hard to use these. But I just kind of wanted to throw that out there because I just happened to see that on a forum the other day. But what I want to do real quick before I start assembling this is, uh, I want to kind of show you the uh, the old truck pan and kind of compare it to this just so you can kind of see the difference in size, depth, etc. And right away, I think it's pretty clear why we're using this pan. I mean, you've got a good, what is that? Uh, good three and a quarter inches um, higher this LS pan or this uh, Holly pan is going to be. So that's going to give us about three and a half more inches of clearance under our vehicle. So the pan's not hanging down and, uh, you know, bottoming out on the road, things like that. Now, what I think is really cool about that is even though this pan is, you know, this much shorter, 
Um, it actually still has a six quart uh, capacity. So it'll still hold six quarts of oil. That's uh, I think with the filter in. One piece you are gonna have to reuse from your old pan is this windage tray here. And uh, the instructions actually show you what we're gonna have to do is actually cut a piece off of this windage tray to work with that pan over there. But uh, other than that, that's the only thing you reuse. You don't even reuse your original dipstick tube. You actually, and I don't, I don't have it yet. I haven't ordered it, but you actually have to use an LS3 style dipstick tube with this pan. You cannot use your truck dipstick tube. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. So you do know ahead of time, if you purchase this pan, uh, you will have to buy that dipstick tube and dipstick as well. That being said, um, I'm gonna go ahead and start getting this pan ready to install. First thing I'm gonna do, look in here, make sure there's no trash or anything in the sump of the pan, and we will go ahead and install our baffle plate here. Woo! I tell you what, guys, how about I just lose the screw first thing? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? But I gotta tell you guys something, last night, I lost a screw while I was working on something and I searched for that screw forever. I mean, like, I seriously was looking for that screw for like 45 minutes, could not find it, losing my fucking mind. I was running around the house cussing, mad as hell. And uh, my wife walks out here with a flashlight and looks straight at it. <laughs> That's I know that's probably happened to you guys before. I mean, that was just, oh my God, that was so frustrating. It wouldn't have made me so mad, except the screw that I lost, I just, I could not find, like I tried finding uh, a screw to replace it. It was a machine screw and it was some weird thread thread count. I, I could not find, and I've got just tons of screws and stuff laying around the garage here. And I just, I could not find one to replace it, so. That's why I was getting so angry. 10 millimeter, that's right. I got two 10 millimeters, guys. <laughs> Everybody always bitching about losing their 10 millimeters. I mean, I'm 41 years old, guys, and I've only lost like 30, 40 of them. I don't know what everybody's complaining about. Back in the day, it used to be the half inch and nine sixteenths wrenches and sockets that you would lose all the time. <laughs> or at least it was for me. Next, I have put some Teflon on our plugs here. So I'm just gonna run those in. It is a three eighths Allen wrench. So we're just gonna snug those up in there. And this is, uh, this is like an NPT, uh, NPT thread. So, you know, the, the Teflon is probably not necessary, but you know, doing it just for good measure, guys. Go ahead and put our new oil plug in. Oil drain plug, whatever you want to call it. 15 millimeter, yep, 15 millimeter. Just snug him. Now back on the bottom, we need to screw in our oil filter adapter, which despite being brand new and in a bag, <laughs> appears to have accumulated a little bit of rust, but it's not a big deal, guys. It does already have thread sealing on it there, so we can just, eh, first, just check and make sure there's no obstructions. Yeah, so we can go ahead and screw that guy right in. I'm sure this is probably supposed to be metric, but I'm, you know, 15 sixteenths fits it, so that's what I'm using. And last but not least, we need to install our block off plate. So there's our gasket. And here's our made in Mexico genuine GM part. Big surprise there. Set him on there. Holly gave us two nice little bolts here. 
to secure this. And you want to give this about a half a ugga dugga. Don't, don't try to strip it out, guys. You don't have to kill it, but uh, I'm not even sure what the uh, torque specs are on that, to be honest with you, but it doesn't need to be god awful tight. I don't know if you guys can see my mark, but as far as I can tell by the diagram, um, <laughs> I was hoping this would be like a straight across cut, but it's not. Uh, it goes like this, down, over, um, let's see, across, over, and then up. Hopefully I get this shit right. All right, so this is our new tray, or our new, yeah, our new windage tray, as close as I can tell. And, uh, you know, this is the piece that I cut off. You can see that. Cut that off the front of it. Um, I mean, honestly, guys, you could probably just make a straight cut across and not use these two bolt holes. I'm guessing the only reason that they want you to still use these two holes is probably just to minimize the chances that the tray might rattle in the engine or something like that but um uh, i'm just saying if you if you really wanted to you could just you know make a straight cut across and make it a lot easier on yourself but uh yeah that's garbage actually i'm gonna save that practice welding <laughs> but uh now i did blow this off with compressed air but before i try it on the engine i want to go ahead and clean it uh make sure there's no metal particles anything like that on it so nothing on here and i'm just kind of test fitting guys to make sure this is all going to work out the way it's supposed to so this isn't final assembly okay that is not encouraging I'm teetering on something. What am I teetering on? Scratchy, scratchy, McScratcherson. Ah. Okay, guys. So based on the scratch that I just saw, I believe my oil pan is most likely uh hitting like right here on this corner let me look at my diagram i think i may have to i think i may have to cut some more material off right here i'm gonna cut this corner off wipe this thing down again and uh, another test fit all right that was most definitely the problem you can see the pan's not rocking now it's fitting nice and flush Let's see if we can get them back off go that's what it was guys i just had to cut this corner off right here um yeah so <laughs> important to follow the instructions and the template guys but uh now that that's done we're good so what i'm gonna do at this point i'm gonna go ahead and bolt the uh, windage tray down i'm gonna go ahead and put my o-ring on my oil pump and bolt it down then we'll clean up our mating surface a little better here and uh, stick the oil pan on. But before we do that, if you guys remember, I like to lubricate everything before I put the oil pan on. So uh, I talked about that a couple videos ago. So what we're going to do now is use the secret sauce. Yep, that's right, guys. Dirt cheap, 10W30, Walmart oil. <laughs> We're just going to pour this all in here to kind of lubricate everything. Just pour it all over the, uh, well, there we go. Pour it all over the crank journals, and backs of the pistons a little bit there. And yeah, just get it all, yeah, good stuff, guys. Get it all down there in the cam. Oh, yeah, that's, that's nice yeah motor loves that it loves it yeah 
and we're gonna put some in the oil pump here oh glug glug oh yeah oil pump loves that guys oh yeah, yeah it says give me some more so i'm gonna give it some more i'm gonna put some on the timing chain yeah that's that's good stuff guys good stuff good stuff nice and lubed the fuck up set our windage trays back in position put all of our nuts on except for our uh, pickup tube nut then we're going to dip our finger in some of our oil here lube up the uh, tube or the uh, o-ring for the pickup tube slide the o-ring on here and put our pickup tube on now when you go to set this in it's very important see how it's not just sliding in it should provide when you go to put this in it should provide just a little bit of resistance as you put it in you don't want it to just fall in but it should go in and kind of click into place you know it should feel like it kind of just snaps into place almost and this one is not doing that like you don't want to force it that's how you tear o-rings oh there it went okay it just needed a little finagling but yeah guys when you go to put it in like i just said you don't want to force it you shouldn't have to put an obscene amount of pressure on it um but it shouldn't just slide in either i mean it should you know <laughs> it should make you put it in now, holly included two little allen head bolts here so you know with their pickup tube you actually get two bolts in it instead of just one bolt and I was I was just sitting here looking at this and I was thinking to myself you know how the hell am I gonna get a wrench down in there to this this other uh, bolt but maybe that's why they give you Allen heads I'm kind of nervous about drop possibly dropping this one hoping there we go whoo yeah it made me nervous because if I had if I had dropped that one, then I would have actually had to turn the engine over to try to uh, get it out or whatnot. And uh, <laughs> I'd have dumped all that oil, that whole quart of oil back on the ground. So that would have, that would have really sucked. But anyway, snug these up. I've got to put my last nut on the pickup tube there. What I might actually do in it, you know it really doesn't matter <laughs> i guess but uh uh i was gonna say i might pour some oil down the pickup tube too just to kind of half prime it but once i flip the engine over that's all gonna just drain back out anyway so i guess that would be kind of pointless i've never done that before i was just sitting here thinking about it and I was like, hey, I got a problem my pickup tube. And I was thinking, no, dumbass, as soon as you flip the engine over, it's just all gonna run back out any freaking way. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get me a clean rag and some alcohol, and I'm going to clean this whole surface. And then uh, I'll lay my gasket on here, set the pan on. So what you just saw me do is install, uh, or not install, but rather put a little dab of uh, silicone RTV in the corner here where the front cover meets the engine block and where the rear cover meets the engine block. I just put a little dab in all four of those creases. Now, for some reason, that's just super controversial to some people. <laughs> I just saw the other day on a on a facebook page where people were arguing oh you shouldn't do that oh you should do it well here's the thing guys i always do it i don't get leaks uh it's actually in the holly instructions when installing the oil pan it actually tells you <laughs> right here right here it tells you to apply a five millimeter bead of rtv sealant 
uh, 20 millimeters long to the engine block directly into the tabs of the front engine cover that protrude into the oil pan surface. And it shows you a little picture here. He's pointing with an ink pen showing where. And then on the next page, you know, it tells you to also do it to the front cover. So, you know, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. I always do it. Make your own decision. Now, I'm just going to lay my gasket on. Set my oil pan on. Try to get it directly down on there, guys, so you don't move your gasket around too much. Then, I'm just going to put all my 10 millimeter bolts in. The 10 millimeter bolts go all around the pan, and then you've got two long bolts that are gonna go in the back of the pan and into the uh, rear cover of the engine. So hold off on the two long bolts for now. Just worry about all of your your main oil pan bolts here. Once you get all those just kind of snug down a little bit, you don't want to over torque them, then we're going to go back. We're, we're still not worried about our two long bolts yet. We're going to go ahead and torque all of our main bolts to 18 foot pounds. And when I do that, what I like to do is kind of start from the center almost like you would a uh, cylinder head or an intake manifold, you know, whatever. I just like to uh, start from the center and work out and across. So I'll go like here, 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 here. You get it. We are going to install our two bolts, our two long bolts that go through the pan into the rear cover. Listen to me very closely, guys. These get torqued to 106 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. If you don't know, that usually means you're gonna have to use a quarter inch drive uh, torque wrench because most uh, three eighths or, or larger torque wrenches do not do inch pounds. Uh, most of them do foot pounds, so very important distinction inch pounds not foot pounds now the only purpose of these bolts honestly you know if everything's already aligned you could leave these bolts out it wouldn't make a shit of difference the only real purpose of these bolts is if we had the front covers and rear cover off at some point during this project these bolts are going to kind of pull it down and align it and snug it to the bottom of the pan uh, otherwise, I mean, that's all these bolts do, guys. So they don't, they don't have to be tightened up tremendously tight. Um, yeah, guys, just be careful. Don't over torque these. You will snap these off. I mean, you use 106 inch pounds. You go to like 120 inch pounds, and you end up snapping them. Uh, hell, I've seen them snap at 106, but you get the point. Finally, comes down to this last round. Finish him. We're gonna take our good old GI oil filter. In this case, it stands for uh, General Motors issued, not government issued. We're gonna scrape the bottom of our secret sauce barrel here for just a little bit of oil to put around, lubricate the seal. And I'm just going to thread this on like hand tight, guys. The only reason I'm going ahead and putting this on is to keep contaminants out of the engine so that's as tight as i'm going to put it on before we go to actually <clears throat> fill this up once this engine is in the car i will more than likely i will more than likely take this off fill it up with oil put it on and you know then i'll uh, i generally i'll put it on and give it like you know half three quarters of a turn with my uh, oil filter wrench and call it good. That's pretty much it, guys. There's our new Holly oil pan, uh, model 302-3. Uh, for those of you who don't know, who haven't watched all the videos, this is going in our 73 Nova here. So, uh, pretty nice piece. I like it. Kind of sucks that you have to trim up your old windage tray to fit, but, uh, you know, got to do what you got to do. It is a nice pan. It's solid, thick aluminum. Uh, it will clear up to a four inch stroke. I think that's the only reason it has this little hump here is 
you know, to clear a four inch stroke. So uh, you could use this, you know, on a, uh, what, a like a 408 stroke or something like that. But you get up into a 4.1 inch stroke, you know, for like a, a 427 stroker or, or something like that. And uh, Holly actually makes another oil pan. Don't quote me on this, but I think they're 302-2 oil pan and 302 uh dash one oil pan i think they all clear the longer um 4.1 stroke I, i'm not positive on that though guys so don't quote me on that you know check out holly's website make sure you do your research uh don't just go by what i'm spitting off the top of my head but yeah that's it guys the oil pan is on this engine and this 4l ade transmission are officially ready to go in here to what i showed you at the beginning of the video uh you know ray came over we actually just i mean we hit this whole engine bay with some degreaser uh pressure washed it hit it with another can of degreaser scrubbed it down as good as we could with wire brushes stuff like that uh then we pressure washed it again then we came in with sanding blocks and sanded everything as best as we could and uh you know pressure washed it yet again so this guy's ready to paint i'm just waiting on some better weather this weekend it is supposed to be i believe uh 60 degrees they are saying it's going to rain so that kind of sucks but if i have to it, as long as the uh, temperature's up you know i can always open the garage door and shoot the engine bay in here and I think what I'm gonna do, I'm actually, I don't know if I'm gonna show it all because it's pretty boring, tedious shit. But I think what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna start wiping everything down with alcohol probably tomorrow night. Um, I would say I would do it on a live feed for you guys, but I think we all know that when I do a live feed, uh, nothing gets done. <laughs> because I, you know, I have to keep up with your comments so I can uh, respond to you guys. That's the whole point of a live feed. At least to me, that's the whole point of a live feed. Uh, I know some people, they'll do the live feed and they don't even read your comments. And I just, uh, you know, I don't even understand what the point of that is. But anyway, uh, so that being said, I can't, you know, really get anything done on a live feed. But I need to wipe all this down with alcohol and mask off everything I don't want to paint and, uh, you know, get it all prepped and ready. I mean, it's prepped. I just need to, like I just said, wipe everything down with alcohol. I want to make sure the paint sticks. And uh, actually, I want you I want y'all's opinion. Uh, I've been going over this with Ray. Ray actually brought me several cans of gloss black. It's the Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 primer and paint for metal. Um, he brought me gloss now i prefer like the semi-gloss or the satin in an engine bay and what i'm thinking about doing actually is i'm thinking about just painting the frame cross member suspension components with the gloss black and then masking those off and coming back and just hitting like the the radiator support the uh, inner fenders all the way up to the edge of the fender here and the firewall with the uh, semi-gloss black. So, uh, you know, I could do that, or honestly, it would be easier to just hit the whole thing with gloss, you know, just one color or the whole thing with semi-gloss. So uh, give me your opinions in the comments below, guys. I, I really want to know. And uh, honestly, Ray doesn't care either way, as long as it, you know, it's just painted. So, uh, yeah, we'll do this. You guys just uh, tell me what you think in the comments, and... Uh, Whatever the consensus seems to be, uh, that's what I'll go with. But the important thing is the engine is together now. It's ready to be set in as well as the transmission. So, uh, guys, we're just we're a painted engine bay uh, away from getting the engine and transmission in and starting to work on the fuel system and wiring and all that. So uh, I'm really excited about that because that is the type of stuff that usually... Uh, I'll just buckle down and get done. It usually won't take me long to do that type of stuff. And once again, I want to thank all of you guys for watching. If you've been around a while, thanks, guys. I, I really appreciate it. I know I've got guys here that have been here since the very beginning, like back with uh, when, you know, the whole turbo build was first starting on Project Steppenwolf. And I really do appreciate you guys that have stuck around. I also appreciate all the new subscribers. I'd like to say hi to you guys right now. 
it's it's kind of overwhelming to think about but we're pulling in about 500 subs a month right now so there's a lot of you guys that are new to the channel i really appreciate you guys coming on board uh, i know a lot of you have come on for the corvette the c5 corvette project uh, that's kind of on hold at the moment but uh I'm thinking about going ahead and trying to get the shift kit put in that soon. Maybe taking it over to Ray's house and doing it in his garage uh, since we've kind of got my tiny garage taken up here for the moment. We will get back to that, but for now, once again, thank you for watching. Now get out in the garage, get something done, and I'll see you next time here on Bad Luck Garage.